Yo, welcome back gamers. My name is Russ. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Havoc Demon Hunter and any other class in Upper Karazhan. I'm going to be doing that by taking you through my own gameplay, pack by pack, as usual, talking through my uh, thought process, my decision making, you know, highlighting what went well and the things that didn't go so well that I could have improved on so I can teach you, you know, the mistakes that you should, shouldn't make and should do. Uh, and I'm hoping that by the end of the video, you'll go away having learned a thing or two so that you can be making all the plays, all the right plays in your next run. So as usual, when the key is counted down on five seconds, I am using my Blood of Silence. Uh, straight after that, I'm putting my Immolation Aura up and then I am doing an I-Beam into meta so I get a free meta at the start of the key. So I can save my real meta for Zolgamux because Zolgamux is sitting at the top of the staircase. While we quickly run up to Zolgamux, I'm going to put my talents and my build and my soul binds and my gear and all that stuff on screen. It'll be flashing up and popping away and things like that. So if you do need to have a look at that, then make sure that you pause the video. And uh, yeah, straight onto the first pack then. We are, we don't have a rogue, so we are not shrouding. Uh, sometimes you can shroud or invis or something on this first spirit, um, the forlorn spirit here. And uh, the next mob straight after that is an Infiltrator. So we're putting some focus on the Infiltrator so we can try and get that one down by the time we get up to Zolgamux, which is the other ghost at the top of the staircase. We want, uh, you know, we want the Infiltrator down so we don't have to deal with the Frontal, we don't have to deal with the Leeching Claws and stuff like that while we're fighting Zolgamux, who already heals for a lot. So uh, yeah, we're putting more of our damage onto the Infiltrator and just kind of cleaving the Spirit. Once we get up to Zolgamux, I'm, I'm going to pop my meta. And we are going to be um, just kind of slapping through it. Now, I really, really don't like Zorgamux. That is obviously the boss commander kind of infiltrator. Um, I do not really like Zorgamux because it just takes such a long time, especially as you get into these higher keys. I've been doing some 27s, 28s, stuff like that. Um, some of which will be uploaded onto the channel. Uh, I actually <laughs> fell down the little hole there with a fell rush. I did not know there was a tiny little hole in the corner. Luckily, I got a life grip back up. Um, so they kind of missed out on my damage as well uh, for this first blood shield so we didn't actually manage to break it until the very very end just making sure that we save like a couple kicks at least for that spirit because if that's um, I don't know what the cast actually does I think it's like a big dot where it does a lot of damage so you definitely need to make sure that spirit is kicked I think it's quite dangerous if you don't kick it but other than that it doesn't really do much I think it might put a little debuff on the tank or something uh, you know thanks the tank's a blood DK so he can pretty much survive anything but yeah, um, making sure that we just focus our main damage onto Zorgamux. And if you can rotate defensive cooldowns, I've said this a million times, if you've been keeping keeping up with these commentaries and things, um, you know, you can blur on the blood shield so it does less damage to you. The Zorgamux heals based on the damage it does with that blood siphon ability. Uh, so if you can mitigate a little bit, then it'll heal a little bit less. So it's kind of like using blur as almost like a DPS gain in terms of, you know, effective DPS on that mob. You know, it's healing less and things like that. So we sadly do get a blood shield here at 7%, which means that we need to deal now with another you know, blood siphon and then it's going to heal up. But yeah, this mob just takes a while. Fortunately, on this dungeon, the timer is pretty lenient. We have a 35 minute timer and uh, yeah, the dungeon, I'd say take it should probably have about a 30 minute timer, maybe 32, something like that. Um, so 35 is quite lenient. And you should be good uh, as long as you don't really wipe a bunch. Uh, even if you do wipe in this key, you can honestly recover it. I've, I've, I've had a couple of you know, last boss wipes or I've had a couple of Medivh wipes or even uh, even though the curator can be problematic for some groups, especially on Tyrannical. So um, it's quite forgiving. So yeah, this one is, um, as you can see, we are hitting this damage column. Now we go on the left side here. And if you actually pull it slightly up the staircase, you can see it's like four or five steps up on the staircase. And that is so that um, we can stand down here and still hit it. Um, but the the swirlies that it spawns when it does this unstable energy ability are actually not going to be able to spawn. Or it's like a very, very, very low chance it can spawn down there because it's on like a different level. So if we tank that down to the bottom of the steps, it could spawn all around it. But because it's like elevated slightly i don't think the, the swirlies are even can like kind of figure out how to go down that little extra level of uh, steps so that's a nice little tip if you are going to do those most groups however do just kind of skip that mob and you can do that by just running straight through the center of the carpet um a way that i do it if you are skipping that is uh, i just line my character up with the there's like diamonds on the carpet little like uh you know squares diamonds and stuff 
I just like line myself up so I walk from point of diamond to point of diamond, point of diamond to point of diamond. So I know I'm like completely equidistant between those two golems. You don't want to be the guy that's ass pulling them. So if you are skipping, just make sure that you walk like right up the center of the carpet and use the patterns to guide you. Now on this nullif nullifier, nullification, um, nullifier, yeah, abstract nullifier. You want to be, uh, it doesn't really do much, to be honest. It will silence people, you know, from now on, from time to time. And uh, when you get silenced, you actually drop your soul. You need to go pick your soul up and you actually get 100% damage buff. So uh, you can actually use that to your advantage. What we do is um, once our soul gets dropped, uh, the first guy always picks it back up because otherwise you have to sit silent and you can't use any abilities. You can't even auto attack or anything like that. So the first guy always picks his up, but then we kind of like as it's approaching, you know, 15% HP or something, we actually stop DPS and let it cast once more. Um, and then we finish it off with four people and we let that fifth guy kind of just like leave his soul on the floor. And then he's going to pick it up when the tanks pull the next pack. So now we're going to do like a double pull of two of these uh, confluence ghosts and two packs of mana worms and uh, the guy you know who had his soul is just going to leave it on the ground and pick it up at the last second or um you know when these mobs get grouped up through the door which everyone happens first um and then he's going to have big damage uh, i think it's probably on our hunter our survival he seems to always get it actually it always goes either on our priest or our hunter so uh but yeah they're going to get 100 uh damage increase so they can do they can completely blow up uh this pack here now Sometimes we've even done like a triple pull on this pack. Um, if like a good person gets the RNG on the buff and the nullification, um, then you can kind of like do a triple pull. But then if, if that happens, you need to be very careful on these com uh, confluence. Is that what they're called? Confluence mobs um, to make sure that they're not casting some. They, they do cast as like arcane barrage, which is like an AOE. Uh, you can interrupt it sometimes. I'm not exactly sure on like the requirements that you need to meet to actually be able to interrupt it. Some of them you can interrupt and some of them you can't. I think it must be maybe to do with like mana or like a mana shield or something that they have. So if you nuke them real hard, real fast, then I think you might be able to actually interrupt them. And like after a certain point, I think it's when the worms are dead or when they've used up all their mana, they just don't do anything. They're literally just melee hitting the tank and they don't really do anything. So at that point, you can actually chain pull next pack or anything like that. But obviously we've cleared everything now so we're going on to the boss itself now you see these markers we have down that's like a general guideline of positioning um obviously if you're ranged stand at range and let the tank take the center and then the melee dps take like either side and if you can try and place your swirlies you know back towards the wall like you see here i'm kind of like hugging the wall at the beginning here so i can place my first set of swirly you know which kills off that part of the room for the rest of the encounter um killing off that section first and you want to be hitting these uh these volatile energies they do a lot of damage if you don't focus them down you're gonna get overwhelmed so i always preach that you should just be like full single targeting uh hitting them as much as you can if uh, the tank moves away the tank has to taunt these by the way so tell your tank to taunt these uh and you should just be cleaving the boss as kind of like a secondary target and making sure that you move uh away every time he does put those swirlies on the ground um because if you do get hit by those swirlies it is a straight one shot and when the evocation comes you want to be focusing the boss if you have a swirl uh, you know a volatile energy remaining at that point then you can actually just cleave that one down that's fine it's more important to get the dps on the boss inside this evocation phase and as you finish the evocation in about four seconds from now you're actually going to pop a personal if you have one um to stop some of that damage because he's going to blow up for like a big arcane explosion when he finishes uh casting that evocation and every single evocation that you get, that's going to hit harder. So as the fight goes on, you can kind of see the, the trend here. If you don't kill the edge, you're going to get overwhelmed. And uh, the longer that the boss is alive, the more evocations he's going to do. While he does take 100% extra damage, so that's like the burst phase. Um, you are going to kind of, um, if you do three evocations, then when he finishes the third evocation, he's going to blow up and hit really, really hard. Like the second one now is going to hit harder than the first and the third will hit harder than the second if you catch my drift right so try and keep up as a demon hunter at least try and keep up a sinful brand or something on the boss uh but focus down the volatile energies try not to stack up with people because then you can kind of get um you can get like double dipped by the chain lightning that these energies do and also they will leap onto the tank as well and do a little aoe around the tank so don't stand on top of the tank either but other than that um just try and focus on the energies and kill the like switch your focus to the curator when he's doing his application because he's going to take more damage 
um other than that pretty simple boss just uh be aware as well when those swirlies come down you know one on every player those five swirlies come down on you guys and you know section off that area of the room uh those swirlies are smaller than the actual ability so give yourself an extra yard or so maybe two even uh to like lenience right um because i have like stood outside the swirly before and the actual ability has hit me still and the telegraphing in general in this dungeon is pretty bad from what i can work out like um i know on the last boss there's purple swirlies that come down the, the shadow phlegm that can be kind of dodgy as well um on curator it's kind of dodgy i think on another boss no maybe not on another boss on a couple of the maybe it's trash i don't know i feel like there's one more in in this dungeon which has got like a kind of weird telegraph uh on its on its ability so just be super careful i would say in upper karazhan and i think lower just be like extra careful of the um you know telegraphs of swirlies and certain things like that now most groups do skip this uh this wrath guard mob here um if you're doing that and you're gonna invis pot or something either invis after you drop down you saw me like back pedal off the ledge there uh, you can either do that back pedal off and he won't aggro straight away and then you can pop your invis pot or you know you pop your shroud if you have a rogue or something um or just don't jump off the ledge you can walk off the ledge inside invis pot but if you jump <laughs> you're gonna take full damage and that's gonna break your invis pot trust me i learned the hard way so just make sure if that happens, you see here our, our Beast Mastery Hunter, since we have two of them, we have a, a survival and a Beast Mastery Hunter. Our Beast Mastery Hunter actually goes down. I don't, don't know what quite happens. Most of the time when people die at that point um, and they have to get like mass res or something, it's because they took full damage because they like jumped off the edge. I don't know about you, but I have like a habit of like, if I'm going to go off an edge, I always jump right because it's like Tyranimo kind of thing. <laughs> like Tyranimo as you jump off. Uh, I don't know, it's like ingrained into my muscle memory. If I go towards the ledge in game, I'm going to press spacebar. So if you're going to do that, uh, invis bot afterwards. Otherwise, just make sure you don't jump. Like, keep your hand off that spacebar and, uh, you know, make sure that you <laughs> don't take that full damage because it will break your potion and it'll be on cooldown and yada, yada, yada. So now we're on to uh, Medivh, which is probably one of the harder bosses if you're pugging, especially without comms because kicks can quite easily get overlapped. Um, I'd say if you're pugging this boss, you probably, I moved out there because we lacked a kick there. Um, even even here, like uh, four of us are on comms here, me, the tank, the healer, and the uh, survival hunter, but the BM hunter is a pug, so he's not on comms with us. Um, so we don't know when he's gonna kick and things like that. And this boss obviously is very, very down to kicks and things. So we got the flame roost luckily going out on the two range, which is really nice for us in melee. But yeah, just uh, try and kick late um, for the sake of having your kicks back up. You don't want to kick early on Medivh. I'd say maybe if you're pugging, you could kick at like three quarters through the cast or something. But in a pug, you're probably going to get a couple of casts go through. We never interrupt the piercing missiles um, because the tank can just death strike that back up. So that's kind of fine um and that's gonna give us an extra kick um for like inferno balls and frostbites and things like that so over here i jump when the uh when the phoenixes come up i go to the door so i can kick the first arcane bolt then we're going to stack darkness and amz um this is going to be like the most intensive phase for your healer uh it's going to be kind of insane actually the amount of damage that these birds do so we're stacking like all personals uh, and like big defensives, AOE defenses and stuff onto that left hand bird. And I just go over to kick the first one just to kind of like save someone, you know, it stops it doing damage for like five or six seconds or so. Uh, and then we're just going to be rotating around the room from the first one as you saw us kill. Then we went over to the doorway and then back, on, well, back onto the third bird. And actually, I think our tank might have uh, stayed on the or he, I think he did first kick on moon and then he ran over to join us at skull. So he did first kick on Moon, I did first kick on Star, and then we kind of all met up at Skull and dropped all our defenses and we focused down that bird there. Because this that phase, the, the bird phase, is going to get easier the more birds that are dead. So the first, as you're killing the first one, that's when you're going to be taking the most damage. And you're going to be kind of like having a bad time in terms of, uh, yeah, you're going to need to pop some, like be ready on your healthstone if you have a warlock be ready on your healing potion if uh hopefully you have some of those get some cosmic healing potions in your bag uh and be just ready to kind of use everything that's going to be the hardest i think 
like overall hardest part of the the phase as you see here we've got the frosty one that's the freest and easiest one to be honest that he can do he will always do the bird one uh once but um the other ones like flame wreath and the frost one he can kind of just like you could you could never see flame wreath or never see that you could get three flame roofs and zero frost you could get three fr frost and zero flame roofs or a mixture of those right so be careful on uh those on the frost one just keep jumping you can jump inside i beam if you're playing a demon hunter as well um and if you're on a caster or something because i've been playing some warlock recently make sure that you jump between every single cast and sometimes if you've got a long cast to do uh you probably can't even do some cast so you might lose some damage in that phase which pretty much sucks but um melee are gonna probably carry you on that boss because they can kind of just sit in melee range and do that and if you do get a flame wreath on you uh as a as if he's casting the flame roof take a step back from the boss and like go to max melee range or even one step behind max melee range and then you can place your wreath like it'll it'll just spawn around your character's feet place your wreath backwards and then just like take take a milli milli step forward right you don't want to cross the line the way that the flame wreath works is uh no one can cross in or out of it can't double jump out of it or anything like that so don't try and cheese it like that you'll be taking a constant ticking damage as well it's like a big dot on you um so no one can cross in or out of it uh so that means no more fell rushing if you're playing unbound chaos you have to just let those procs die uh while you have a flame wreath um pop a blur if you have one and if you do drop very low you can nether walk and just sit in the nether walk doing nothing um while you get topped back up by a healer and then you can drop the nether walk and keep hitting the boss um, here we accidentally pull the rat this is not in our route we're not supposed to take the rat here we're only supposed to take the infiltrator uh, and then the other infiltrator by the boss but we somehow pulled a rat yeah that's that second infiltrator coming in now we somehow pulled the rat and uh yeah it spawns like the wall of rats so that popped our our priest's pod there um and then uh somehow in this pool at some point the tank goes down i think even a hunter goes down to a storming in like the rat army wall thing and honestly like this rat just caused so many problems and we weren't even supposed to fight it so we we, lo we lost like a combat res and a bunch of time just fighting this rat because of i don't know i think it just patrolled in like a weird position you can just hug the complete right side of the room here so that you you don't even go close to it and you just want to take the two infiltrators the one on the rat that we pulled intentionally at the start and then the one that's kind of patrolling around by the boss as a hunter going down and uh at some point our tank will go down at which point i nether walk to go and res him and he just goes down again honestly i think it was maybe greed with death strikes a little bit um death striking when he when he was already high hp and that kind of like he didn't catch back up after that but you know it's just a misplay and that's that's kind of fine it'll happen uh, especially if you're pugging these kind of keys as well you might just have kind of freak freak incidents like this happening and uh you just gotta do like don't instead of like pointing uh blaming and stuff like that you just got to adapt right so here yeah, you know you could be like oh my god i can't believe you're dead oh who, who pulled this something like just adapt and like i go for the nether walk i go for the res sadly he just gets straight one shot again here <laughs> and then uh i think they can kite it out until we get back now i think uh i think i just sit in my body and these guys finish it off like fortunately we got hunters to kite it and stuff like that but yeah uh not the best not the best we didn't lose too much time but we did lose a combat res and that's probably the worst part of this entire fiasco here and then we're going to go straight on to the mana worm boss because now both infiltrators are dead um so yeah be super careful on medivh and uh be careful they can just hug this right side you see the little banister on the right side you can just hug that and you should never ever pull any of these books or rats or anything like that you don't want to take any of this trash because um it's way more hassle than it's worth and the mana worms after this boss give so much percentage firstly there's not that much trash in this dungeon in upper karazhan and if you do need like that's why you skip the wrath guard and stuff like that. you just basically skip as much as you can because you're going to take the aoe uh you know mana worms after this boss so here we pull the uh we have a nice little strap for this where our dk usually actually tops the dps um he's going to pull him straight into the corner now this is going to mean that the orbs that are going to fly out of the boss they are only going to be able to actually spawn in basically a 90 degree cone because you see here um there's books to our left that counts as a wall and then there's a banister to the right here on my screen um that's going to count as a wall as well so it's actually blocking off a lot and they can only spawn in like an arc 
uh, instead of like all around the boss. And you see like all the ones that are trying to spawn to the left and behind and stuff. They spawn in the center of the boss's hitbox. Um, so our DK is just standing right in the center of the boss's hitbox here. And uh, any orbs that kind of spawn in in that entire like big uh, 270 degrees, I guess it would be, arc behind him. They're just going to spawn right on top of him and he can either AMS them to just soak them up immediately and then they kind of despawn like a hunter can uh, use turtle on them. A mage can go and soak, soak a bunch of them and then ice block them off. As a DH you can go soak and then you can pop nether walks, sit inside one of these little uh, purple well things and uh, drop off your stacks and then uh, yeah so you also sit for the big AoE. You see that big AoE lightning that comes out the boss is about every 30 seconds or so there is a weak or for i've got it since i did this run i'll pop it in the description down below for you um just keep an eye on that aoe and when it's coming the timer is not exact but uh it will come about every 30 seconds you want to try and like have a blur for that or you can pick up some orbs nether walk um to kind of like stall your health while you get top back up and drop them off inside these uh, little purple zones so there's purple swirling zones uh, you see now I have a dot on me. There's like a debuff on me. It's going to increase my damage done because I soaked an orb, but it's also going to tick a dot on me. So um, you kind of it's kind of like a risk reward, uh, kiss curse kind of effect, right? But because our DK is standing right in the center of the hitbox, he's actually just soaking loads and loads and loads of them. So he has like 10 stacks of this dot. So he's taking tons of damage, but of course he's a DK. So he can just kind of self heal it all back up with death strikes. Uh, and... A lot of the time, especially in our higher keys, he's actually been doing like the highest DPS in this boss. He can do like 20, 23K and stuff single target because he's just got so many of those stacks. So that's really nice if you do have a DK that can just, you know, self-sustain and the healer doesn't have to shell mana out on them. Um, you know, the, the DK can do like 37K HPS on that boss or something. It's kind of nuts. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, you know, just um, make sure that you are uh, picking up some of the orbs and dropping them off. Better to play safer there to be honest it's probably one of the harder bosses in this dungeon um especially on tyrannical it's very scary with the big aoe and then this is the trash i was talking about these uh mana devourers here are just gonna be um they're like basically versions of the boss but we were miniature before now we're normal size so we can just take them out aoe uh again you just gotta soak the orbs you see the firing out orbs just, they're really really weird and janky on the hitboxes again like this is probably one of those mechanics I'd say in this dungeon. Kind of bad hitbox, kind of bad telegraph. Um, and they kind of AoE whenever you soak an orb as well. So you want to be, you see here, I'm like running straight through this orb and it's not counting as being picked up here. If you do manage to pick them up, you're going to get a 10% damage buff and healing buff per orb. So you want your entire group to soak those really. Because if they reach the worms, the worms are going to explode and do tons of damage and you might even wipe and stuff. Luckily, there is a checkpoint you know right where we killed the boss so that's fine if you die it's not the it's not the end of the world but obviously you'd rather not right especially when you gotta like reset the pack or whatever so sometimes people pull i'd say six worms is kind of fine some people like to pull like three or four packs together which uh or like sorry three yeah three or four packs together which is pretty dodgy in my opinion uh, unless you can really really soak all these orbs now you can pull the packs and then pull them down this corridor and just keep cutting them away down the corridor and then you'll you know, all the orbs they fire out will kind of stream towards them in a little line, a little nice little, uh, you know, uh, cone coming towards them. So you can just kind of, you know, they'll they'll passively get soaked up and that's fine. I'll give you a damage buff. So that's a nice way to do it if you are going to go like uh, down that route. Otherwise, just stick to pulling like two packs of three and then two packs of three if you need the trash. Um, this is where you're going to make most of your percentage up in your route. So that's going to allow you to skip uh, as you saw, we've skipped loads now. We've skipped the Wrath Guard um, straight after, uh, what's he called, Curator. Here we're using an invisibility, <laughs> invisibility part to go past these Slayer and Pyromancer mobs. These ones are an absolute bitch. I would, I would highly recommend you never pull these mobs. Uh, if you do happen to pull the mobs, the Slayer is going to do a frontal, which is like a, a frontal cleave hammer swing, uh, and it's going to do a knockback. And you're obviously fighting on a little bridge. So if you're going to pull those mobs, pull them back into the tunnel towards the mana worm room and the library. Um, personally, I would advise that you always skip these. Just chug an invisibility potion and you should be absolutely fine. Uh, don't be too greedy with it. you got you got time. It's like 18 seconds. you got time to get past everything. So 
if you're going to invis pot and just go that route that would be my biggest suggestion um otherwise uh yeah if you do those mobs the slayer does the hammer swing and the pyromancers they will do uh they will spawn these like green orbs um and you need to stand on them to soak them and they'll get smaller and smaller and smaller as you soak them uh to uh yeah and other if you don't soak them they'll blow up so you want to be uh soaking them to make them small before they blow up that's kind of the idea but yes i'd highly suggest you don't do those so we're on the chess event now usually you just focus one of the knights someone will skull marker one of the knights hopefully you know someone in your group will do that if they don't then you be the guy to do that but skull marker one of the knights focus down a knight once the knight is dead or any of the chess pieces the king will become vulnerable for maybe like 15 seconds or so and i think he takes extra damage uh, I, I could be wrong on that uh, i think he does and then you want to be hitting him for those 15 seconds now the idea is you want to get him to 30 percent i think it's 30 percent health um and then he won't put up his uh invulnerability shield anymore so you're trying to dps the knight down make the king run a roll get him to 30 percent uh, if you don't get him quite to 30 percent i'm gonna put a shield back up then you're gonna have to kill another chess piece so we go for the other knight now uh, to make him vulnerable again and hopefully we're going to get him to 30 percent this time if we don't then we've got to kill another one and that queen right there is looking pretty juicy so he goes to 34 33 yeah and he put the shield back up so now sadly we're two percent sure we need to kill this queen now to get his shield down again uh and then we can get the, the king uh off now uh once he's below 30 he will still attack the tank so he does need to be tanked um and he will do his little slicing ability and things, but he just won't be invulnerable to damage. So um, if you are standing close to the king as well, uh, you will need the tank to, to tank him. Just don't stand in his melee range. His melee range is generally like, you know, around his hitbox, but it's like, it's kind of dangerous to stand in those like nine squares around him. If you see what I mean, like he's got, he's in like a three by three grid on the chessboard. Uh, he can't move. So you can, uh, you just don't want to be standing in that and every time he becomes uh, invulnerable again like after he's see he's like dazed right now and he's taking extra damage uh, he's gonna do like a nice he's gonna do like a nine but sorry three by three like those nine squares around him like an icy swirly you're gonna see it in a second uh, if we don't kill him uh okay yeah it's when he puts his shield back up he does that little icy swirly thing you're gonna make sure you're not standing on those basically any of the chess uh, pieces that are kind of like having an animation on them uh, in this phase, I'm going to one-shot you, uh, especially on Fortified, but I'm pretty sure even on non-Fortified, they hit for like 900k or something. It's it's meant to be a one-shot. They're quite, that well, they're very easy to dodge. You should never even need like a heal on that, that this like kind of chess event thing. Um, so the pieces are going to be flying around and then they're going to be stomping down and then, you know, uh, Rooks will do like a, a cross pattern the queen will do a cross pattern plus the other cross pattern the bishops will do the diagonal pattern you know you know how chess works uh, it's like their move set basically and the knights will do uh, kind of well the l shape pattern that knights do in chess right um and meanwhile that king is just gonna hit every square around him because you know kings can only move one square so chess knowledge will certainly come in handy uh on that on that event but yeah in general if you just see any anything going on with any of the tiles some of them do have a bit of a dodgy animation, I will admit. But if you see anything going on with any of the tiles, it's a one shot. So just make sure that you play safer rather than sorry here, yeah. And now onto the last boss. He three phases. Um, first phase, he's gonna. You see that laser beam that's following me around there. You want to take that out if it goes on you, uh, and kind of like kite it around at the edge, edge of the room. He's also going to do this frontal called disintegrate. It's a very, very, very long cast time, so make sure you do not get hit by that. If you do get hit by Disintegrate, well, you kind of fucked it, not gonna lie. Uh, and then he's gonna do these uh, barrages. They take quite a long time to come down, these uh, green swirlies here. So you do have quite a lot of time to move. Sometimes you just gotta get off the boss and not be greedy. Uh, and then there's an interrupt to do. And uh, if you saw those balls flying out, he's gonna put a debuff, a magic debuff on one player. On the second platform, he'll put it on two players. On the third platform, he'll put it on three players. And the boss phase is at 66 and 33. So I think in general, you want to pop your cooldowns on pull uh, to deal with phase one. And then what what we like, what I like to do is bloodlust second platform um, because no one has any cooldowns. So it just makes this one a little bit quicker. It's really great if you can phase the boss uh, before 
he gets the debuffs out, the two ball magic debuffs out on people. Uh, so we bloodlust this platform, and then we have cooldowns back up for the last platform again. So that's kind of uh, the strat that we tend to do. I've seen pugs using bloodlust on the last platform just so they zerg it down. Um, and you can actually do a little trick on this platform where you can uh, stand, uh, it's like the top left of my screen. You can stand like out of his range and he'll actually just never start the phase. So you, if you have range DPS, you can actually just stand out of his range and he'll just fire disintegrates down the center of the ship. Uh, and you can actually just kill him from range and he'll never do any mechanics. So if you do a full range team, you can actually do that. Uh, or even two range DPS, you could just do that from ranged and uh, you could stall out that phase. A really safe way to do it is to get range DPS to get him to about 40% or so. And then you start the phase and he will never put the debuffs out on people. And then you can actually save Bloodlust for the last phase. So if you do have a range DPS comp, uh, consider saving Bloodlust for last phase. Because it can be quite dangerous. Um, with the camera angle, as you saw that big puff of smoke in my face. And uh, yeah, what you want to be doing here is interrupting the Stabilize Rift at the last second. Try and get those adds down nice and quick if you can. And you want to be interrupting. Did I say that already? Uh, yeah, you want to be interrupting the Stabilize Rift at the last second. Watch your feet. Very, very, very important that you watch your feet on this platform. There's these like very kind of hard to see purple swirlies, which come down very quickly uh, and they will one shot you. Meanwhile, there's also the ball debuff going on three people. So I never walk that one because it ticks quite hard and then they pop. Uh, usually, you know, people will get dispelled like on mass dispelled if you're running a priest and then the balls are going to come up. So you want to move out and just stand still and wait for a dispel and don't be moving as... Uh, as it gets dispelled or you can instantly take a tick of the ball and you'll also AOE everyone around you if you do get hit by a ball. So be super, super, super careful of those ball debuffs. Be super, super, super careful watching your feet on that last platform. Other than that, just try and uh, not put your camera through that massive cloud of smoke like I did and uh, kill those ads down nice and quick. Uh, a lot of pugs will bloodlust the last platform anyway, so you should be okay on there. And yeah, uh, we got a nice eye of command trinket from that as well, which is cool. Um, but that's pretty much it for, for Karazhan. I feel like I touched on everything. Just be, uh, just don't play too greedy on last boss, honestly. Uh, the amount of times I wiped on this last boss in Legion is, uh, is a, cr is a, is a cringe amount. Yeah, it's a cringe amount, to be honest. Um, and it's quite easy mechanically. It's probably one of the easier, if not the easiest boss in this dungeon, to be honest. Um, but people, it, it's very punishing. You know, if, uh, if you dispel too early or if your healer dispels you as soon as you're, um, you know, the ball debuffs go out, then uh, that can wipe you. Uh, if you don't watch your feet on the platform, that can kill you straight up. Um, so yeah, just be super, super careful. And uh, if in doubt, just play safe. Uh, hopefully you learn a thing or two. And I will have another commentary. The last dungeon, I believe, is Gambit. And that will be coming out over the next couple of days. And then I will be having a full Mythic Plus Demon Hunter guide out on the channel. So up on the screen for you now should be another commentary or playlist of commentaries if you're interested in watching any more of these kind of videos all right so have a great day thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one as always peace